Welcome to the Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger Podcast. This is the podcast where we watch an episode of the televisual production Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, then afterwards we provide commentary using our favourite mouth orifices. This is episode number 40. <laughs> okay, Michael? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Oddly enough, I have some issues with that description of our show. Look, I do the descriptions, you do the other things. Okay. It's not his favourite mouth or face orifice. Anyway. Uh, we're going to be watching episode number 45 of Money Morph Power Rangers, which is entitled Crystal of Nightmares, uh, which I'm hoping will be an episode about Crystal Math that involves bad trips. But I guess we'll find out. I mean, look, I wouldn't get my hopes up too much about that. No. We're welcoming back Amanda. Welcome back, Amanda. Hello. By popular demand. By popular demand. That's right. How yeah. does it feel to be uh, a champion of the people? Um, it feels good. It feels like I've finally gotten the dues I deserve. Did you say the Jews? Yes, the Jews. Like, pay your Jews. Oh, Jew. okay. Yeah. Not Jews. Like, no. people from Jerusalem. No. Although, if you want Jews to give me from. Jews, then I don't know what I'd do with them. It's got a very That's topical like, That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Crystal of Nightmares. Crystal of Nightmares. That's right. Uh, I am your host, Matthew. Uh, Michael, the I other am, host is here. I'm also here. Howdy, folks. Howdy. I don't think... We're, we're both been on every episode so far, haven't we? I mean, yeah. Just, we haven't had to get a guest host yet. That's the host other yet. hosts, because... That's, that's, that's our job. This works. That's our whole at deal. At some point, one of us will miss one, mm-hmm. and it will be me because Matt cares too much about being on all of them. Yeah. Um, although, rails quickly I don't episode. know how you're going to uh, record with me not here. Don't, you don't, look, I've seen how you do it. You press the space bar. That's all needs to happen. You, you, you don't bet, press like, the space the, bar. The first person to miss one has to, like, buy the other pizza or something. Do a backflip at episode 200. Oh, wait, Michael's already doing I'm that. I'm not doing... Can we stop saying that I'm going to do a backflip? <laughs> okay, Power Rangers news. Uh, so we found out recently that the Power Rangers movie that is currently on the, in production at Lionsgate, or in pre-production, I guess, uh, will be executive produced by Mr. Robert Olkey. He's done a whole lot of stuff, including the most recent Star Trek movies, uh, and will be written by Ashley Miller and Zach Stentz, I believe it is, yep. uh, who have been writers on X Men First Class and Thor. Yep, and I think they did some episodes of the Sarah Connor Chronicles and Fringe and Fringe. With Orky, I believe. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, hopes are high. Hopes are high. I think what this tells me is that they're willing to commit a bit of money to the project. Because whenever Saban gets involved, I'm always really concerned about corner cutting and cost cutting in any way possible. And but shooting everything for $12 exactly. in New Zealand because <laughs> that's cheaper than shooting in America. Uh, that was all Disney. You can't really put, pin that on Saban. I mean, they still do it, though. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I think this is this bodes well in like some small way. Uh, I don't love Orky's work, particularly. Yeah. Uh I, I like it. Mm, I'm on the fence. Yeah. On the fence, but I mean, he's just a producer. That's right. He he's not writing. Yeah, uh, and I loved X Men First Class. Yeah, uh, I like it less, but still like it. Yeah, and I, I thought Thor was pretty solid. Yep. So well, the producers do have a lot of control. Over oh, absolutely. Them. Yeah, but I think he's. I think I probably trust him more as a producer than as a screenwriter, yes, to be honest. I'd agree with you there. Uh, all of the films he's been involved in with, with on a producer level have been Pretty cool. solid productions if the script wasn't quite there. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah, so I guess that's all we have to go on. I think there's going to be a very slow drip of information on this one. I mean, at some point they'll hire a director, and I'd imagine that will be sooner rather than later. Yeah. Although, if they've just hired writers, presumably they're going to have a few months on the script, and then once the script is done, they'll get it. Director? Or they'll bring someone in straight away so they can not have to do a second pass at the script and just get the director on. Yeah. I'd imagine it will be soonish, but... Yeah. We'll I, I think, because as we're recording, um, San Diego Comic Con is on right now. Yep. I expect we're probably going to hear some sort of something next year. Yes. That uh, uh, Absolutely. I yeah. think that'll be we might get some, like, concept art or something like that, is my feeling, this time next year. Yeah, we don't, we don't have a director yet. We could have a cast. 
Yeah. Next year at Comic Con. I think if they are shooting, it'll be very early days. Yeah, I don't think they'd be shooting yet yeah. in a year. That's well. Look, I think maybe. I think especially on these sort of films, you'll get a script in six months or so. Yeah, so. that's true. I mean, it's pretty easy. Ah, oh, crazy witch on the moon. <laughs> Oh, look, head in the tube. Whoa, there's the kids. Woo, transform. I guess I'm hoping I mean, for something a little more elaborate than that. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't get your hopes up. I guess the, the, the challenge here is that the normal Power Rangers episode has a set formula. Yeah. But you can't just have one of the formulas the movie. Yes. It sort of has to be a movie that encapsulates the whole idea rather than just one. I'm chunk personally of it. hoping they bring Ivan Ooze back. <laughs> <laughs> no one is hoping that. I genuinely like Ivan Ooze. Oh, I feel like you haven't watched that movie recently. Though. I mean, I haven't. I Every time I get the urge to watch it, I remind myself that one day we will get up to that point. Yeah. And it will be good to have not seen it recently. Yeah. I think nostalgia can sometimes not quite... Like, when we were at Batman Trivia the other night, we watched the fan film Batman Dead End. Yep. Which I must have watched 50 times as a kid yep. and loved it. And then seeing it's not great, it, is it, it doesn't hold up. Like the dialogue in that film, that short film, is super rough. Yep. You know, um, I mean that's because the dialogue is there to facilitate Batman versus aliens and Predator. Yes, but but it also tries to like encapsulate the Batman Joker dynamic in it, two minutes, yep. and it's very on the nose. Um, and I kind of wish that I'd, I'd never seen it and it just remained the way it was in my imagination. Yeah. In, yeah. Anyway. And now you're going through and ruining Power Rangers for yourself. That's right. Hooray. Um, I would like to talk about what we're talking about, the movie. Yeah. Um, an article came out that was an, an interview with Orky or just a, a small conversation. Yeah. Um, where he was talking about, you know, the, the history of the show and whether or not it would be in continuity with the show and that sort of thing. Yeah. And a lot of people interpreted his remarks as it will be in the same continuity as the show. Yeah. But that's absolutely not how I read what he said. Yeah, my interpretation of it was that he's saying they would be respectful to yeah, the show. that they would be aware that the show had a 20-year history and yep. acknowledge that, you know, it's a thing that people care about. Yeah. But not necessarily... There's, it's going to be in continuity. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking they might, might go the alternate universe are you thinking that that's just his one trick now? Is he just, let's Star Trek, what are we going to well, do? Also, <laughs> universe, Power Rangers, what are we going to do? Well, also he's facing universe. the same problem, so... Yeah, it is, it is very much a similar issue. Um, I, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. So something goes really wrong in the Power Rangers universe, and Tommy has to go of back course, in yeah. time. Yeah, it's, to, of course, because of course it's Tommy, yeah. right? He goes back in time, to back to the original Rangers, to divert history. Yeah. I mean... I don't know what could have gone so pressingly wrong in the first season of Power Rangers, but... Oh, you know, uh, if you don't... Something, something, Lord Zed. Well, yeah, maybe, like, 20 years' time, Rita succeeds in destroying the universe, so Tommy has to go back and is like, look, guys, I know this seems a bit excessive, but you have to kill Rita. You've got to just nuke the moon. (laughs) That's your only option, is to nuke the moon. You've only got 20 years to do it. Go back to before she was sealed into the dumpster, and then... (laughs) Yes! Because now the moon is set 10,000 years ago. Yes! (laughs) I mean, this all sounds like pretty solid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we'll see, but I think, I think the odds of Jason David Frank not cameoing are like slim to none. Yeah, he's going to be in there. I mean, at the, like if he's not in there, he's going to show up every day they're filming and walk around the background. Yeah, <laughs> um, he's, he's just going to be banging on the gates. I yeah, think. He's, yeah. Uh, but I think he may not necessarily be Tommy. No. I think, yeah, it'd be a weird road to He's home. Tommy is an old man, time travel dude. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he'll play Ernie. That'd be pretty oh, that'd cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we got some emails. Did you want to do emails? Yeah, yeah let's do those emails. I love uh, emails. All right, let's go from the oldest to the newest. All right. This first one is from... Uh, Jeremy? It's, it's, I think it's pronounced Jeremy. Okay, I'll take your word on that one. I mean, I don't know that for a fact. I haven't asked him, but... Uh, so Jeremy says, hello guys. Can you not Ger- call him Jeremy? Okay, I apologize, because Jeremy. It's, the odds are that it's Jeremy, and you're just <laughs> insulting his name every time you say that. I don't mean to, I really appreciate you sending his emails, Jeremy, so I don't want to... <laughs> uh, he says, hello guys, Jeremy again, which Aww. is indeed my name. Still loving the show, especially your special episode, watching an episode of Zyranger. Ranger. Thank you. We had a lot of fun doing that yeah, one. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah. We're talking about probably doing it regularly. Yeah. Amanda, did you... 
catch up with that one? Um, yeah, I, I might have caught bits and pieces of it. Yeah, that was a good time. Uh, if you guys decide to do that again, I highly recommend that you check out the episodes Scary Riddle Time and Stand, Dayu Zujin. Um, Scary Riddle Time sounds awesome. <laughs> one of my favourite episodes of Batman the Animated Series is that early Riddle, riddle yep. one, so I'm down for that. It's the two-part introduction of the Zyra Ranger equivalent of the Megazord. Yep. Oh, okay. And the episodes were adapted into the Power Rangers episode A Pressing Engagement. Oh. I barely remember a pressing engagement. Do you remember who the monster was in a pressing engagement? No, it's all blur. I think it might have been like giant or bones, or it wasn't bones. No, it wasn't bones. I think it may have been giant. Yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> While I don't want to spoil too much, it features my favourite monster of the week from any show ever. Whoa! He's basically the Riddler from Batman. What? Except if you take too long on one of these riddles or get it wrong, he turns into a giant sphinx and transforms you into a tree. Oh, so Michael, a sphinx. Michael, that, write this down. That you have sounds to watch this. amazing. Okay, even if it's not an episode of this show, yeah. I think we're definitely watching that episode. Yeah. Oh wow. boy. You, okay. I love riddles and I love like. Jeremy, you have done such yeah. a good job on selling me on this. I'm going to start calling you Jeremy. You've earned it. Good work. Yeah, you've earned being called by your own name. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, so Jeremy says, it also features Bandora and her minions dancing in joy. Excellent. Either way, still loving the podcast and hope you make it all the way to Samurai. Yeah, well, me too. I like that he doesn't particularly care if we make it to Mega Force. <laughs> yeah. Just as the, if you make it to Samurai, that's it. You know, we're still enjoying it. Yeah. I mean, it's a long road to hoe. I can't <laughs> say what how we'll be like in like Jungle Fury, but, you know, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we've got... Uh, two more emails. Now, this one appears to be about the name of our monster ranking segment, which yep. we're desperately in need of a name. Uh, so, this is from Luke McClung, who recommends the name Monster Roster. It's pretty good. Yeah. He says, it almost rhymes, which is exactly as much effort as the show deserves. <laughs> I hope he means Power Rangers and not our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, monst- I don't, I monster don't Roster. That. Okay, I'm going to write that one down. Okay. We'll- That's definitely going on the list. Yep. Uh, this is from Brandon. Hey, Brandon. Hello again, Brandon. Uh, Brandon says, hello. I've been racking my brain for a good name for your villain list, and the best I can come up with is Massive Mischief Makers Manifest. Whoa. I mean, that's I, I approve of the alliteration there, Brandon. Yeah. Or maybe just the Mischief Makers Manifest. It's not great, but alliteration is the shit. That's true, Brandon. Alliteration is alliteration the shit. Alliteration is awesome. All right, I'm going to put An amazing. Mischief Makers Manifest on, on there. My only concern with that one is that I'll have to say it, and that's hard to say. Can you, can you could you combine the two and make it Monster Manifest. That's not a bad idea. Manifest. I like the word mischief, though. It's oh, yeah, funky. that's true. I mean, sure, but you could just say mischief if you want it. Yeah. Monster Manifest isn't bad. Yeah. Monst- the Monster Manifest. All right. We'll, 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 we'll chew, we'll talk about chew it, yeah. on that one for a while. Uh, thank you, both of you, for your naming suggestions. I really yeah. appreciate it. All right. Uh... Do you have anything else you wanted to talk about? No. Let's get a pretty solid little okay. conversation. All right, let's go watch uh, Crystal Method of Nightmares, <laughs> uh, episode 45. I've had some Crystal Method of Nightmares in my time. Have you? Yeah. Uh, episode 45. <laughs> okay, that's a conversation we're going to have to have off air. Uh, we're going to go watch that, and we'll see you in a sec. Hi, guys. I, look, I was kind of chuffed with this episode. Like, it was uh, it was different from normal. It, look, I think you could not not call it different. It yeah. was different, but not in a good way. Uh, look, at this stage, for, for me at least, because we've had such a long run of just kind of samey episodes, yeah. something different is refreshing. It wasn't me. different in that it was all of a sudden, like, really good. Yeah. It was just different, and that's not bad given how many of these we've got to go. Yes. But okay. look, I, I quite enjoyed it, to be perfectly honest. All right, will we talk about it? Let's talk oh, about oh. it. So the episode starts off with Zach waltzing into a room saying, Hey, girls. Yep. Which I wish is how he entered all scenes. I mean, the girls are Kimberly and Trini. Yeah. It's not just like a random group of girls. Yeah. So but The way he was walking, it was like some extra swag there. Yeah. Like, I, I wish he was, you know, like the, the Ryan Gosling, hey, like, hey, girl, man. Right. You, you I, wish I, I would Zach to be same. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girls. Okay. All right. Yep. Uh, so they're, they're talking about how they've got a test coming up that they're mildly concerned about. Yep. Um, and Billy suggests the really well, cool he's idea. He's got a plan so yeah. that they can pass. 
And I, I did think, like, is it some sort of nefarious, like, is he going to transfer science knowledge into all their brains? Or is he going <laughs> to, like, you know, do something? No, his plan is that they're going to spend the weekend studying. But his plan is to go away to, like, an exotic cabin in the wilderness and study. Because which, they can't do it at home. That, yeah, that was so bizarre. It's not like, hey, come over on the weekend and we'll study. It's, let's go over to the setting of Cabin in the Woods and study. And yep. it, it probably wouldn't end in a horror film. Luckily I like for them, that they high-fived the science. <laughs> I yes. mean, look, you say that it didn't end in a horror film, but some of the stuff I saw today <laughs> was pretty <laughs> horrific. That's I mean, true. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then we find out that Bulk and Skull, uh, at risk of getting another year of detention yep. for not passing... If they get Ds in this test, yep. they will get detention for the rest of the year. According to Mr. Kaplan, which is very confusing considering that Mr. Kaplan previously informed us that they have 20 years of detention... It also doesn't strike me as a great educational tool. No. Yeah. Like, hey, you're dumb. Go sit in detention. That'll make you feel less dumb about yourself. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Mr. Kaplan is a good educator. No, I mean, I'd agree with you there. Yeah. This is a school with one teacher and a principal. And so that, that one teacher is always sick. Yeah, so well, the principal yeah. always has to fill in. She's busy. She's got other stuff to do. I wonder what, she, I wonder what Miss Appleby was doing. She felt like in a play, like a community theatre play. <laughs> so she didn't have time to be on Power Rangers. That's certainly possible. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, so, they're, they're talking about the test, and then Rita... No, sorry. Golgar okay. decides that the best thing to do is to finally utilise... What is it? Is it the Crystal the of Nightmares? Crystal of Nightmares. Yeah. yeah. The titular Crystal of Nightmares to give them bad dreams and steal their self-confidence. Yep. Uh, which means they won't be able to use their powers because apparently their powers are now self-confidence powered. Yep. Yeah, because at first we just like, why should I care about their self-confidence? And he's like, well, if they... <laughs> <laughs> All those voice is not great for long stretches of time. No. Uh, yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. He just says, oh, um, if they're not self-confident, then they lose their powers and then we can finally defeat them and take over the world. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, like, oh, okay, if that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Sure, yeah. No, the Penny drops it, now. she's like, oh, I see. Yeah. She Without has the pretty power much no role in this episode. Yeah, no, this is a very Goldar-heavy episode. Yeah. Which features not one, but two disappointing teleport ends to fights. <laughs> Hooray. Uh, so they've gone to this cabin. Yeah. They're studying. We say cabin. It looks more like a motel that is... Like and it happens to be near woods. Near, near woods, like on the side of a highway near some woods. Yeah. But it's a refreshing change of location for Power Rangers. It, like, it wasn't a quarry or an old factory, so I was excited. No, it was a set. Someone built it. Yeah. I'm still confused as to what it was, because he said it was like his uncle's cabin or something, but there was a maid? Yeah, it was definitely a hotel. It's definitely it? like a motel kind of arrangement. Yeah. I assume his uncle owns, like, the motel thing, or has some sort of permanent room at a motel. Hey, friends, let's go study at a motel. I mean, look, Angel Grove's not a hugely exciting place once you get past the giant monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so they're there and they're studying. They're doing quite all they're studying because they're turbo nerds. Uh, and then they decide they need a break and they're going to get some food. Yep. Uh, so J- Jason, like, does some burger hands. He's like, I really need a big burger. Uh, and then Trini... <sighs> <sighs> That's what Trini wants, guys. Take a guess. Yes, yes. Did you guess Chinese food? <laughs> if so, well... Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Uh, yeah, that was disappointing. To be fair, I think she's technically Vietnamese. Yeah, she's not Chinese. Yeah, no, no, no. But, but, the, the prob- but the problem is that, like, they don't make like this. I don't think that's the show being slightly culturally subversive. <laughs> no. I think that's the show not giving a shit that there's a difference. No, right? I think that's the right of being like, uh... That Chinese girl can write Chinese, I guess. Yeah. Because she's Chinese. No. Yeah. Wrong. And the only thing that would have been worse if Zach had then gone, and some fried chicken. <laughs> no. Like... <laughs> oh, okay. Couldn't one of the others want some Chinese? Yeah. That Wouldn't that have, like... It would have served the same, let's get some conversation purpose. Yeah. And just been so much less racist. <laughs> Anyway, they exit to do that. Yep. And taking advantage of this situation is Bulk and Skull. Who are in the woods. They're, they're, they're just hanging around in the woods. Uh, so they're going to break into the Power Rangers room to steal their study notes, I guess. Of course, they would still have to look at the study notes and, like, study them. So it doesn't really... Sit. I kind of feel like if Bulk and Skull had just said, Hey, look, we understand we're dicks, but if we get a D, we have to do detention forever. Yep. Can you help us out? 
the Power Rangers would be morally obliged to say yes. To say, yeah. yeah, come study with us, just don't put pie on your face or whatever. Yeah. But no, they don't do that. Instead of doing that. They do, oh, sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> I, I'm definitely going to have some nightmares about this, oh, particularly Bulk. God. So what happens is they enter the room in a maid disguise. Yeah. Uh, which is like pink stereotypical maid's outfits and wigs. With skull, uh, Bulk is in a long blonde wig and skull, uh, skull has like a black bob. Uh, and I believe that Bulk is wearing lipstick. They is that yeah, they both have makeup on. They both have makeup and lipstick, which yeah. is an impressive commitment. Uh, look, I, look, I don't have anything specific against cross dressing. If that's what you're doing, no, that's cool. Sure, fine. But um, Bulk specifically in that role is a confronting image. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, don't I don't insult the guy, but I don't think he pulls it off. Basically, no, it's not the look for him. Yeah. I don't know what I can say about it. Like, it, it was just there. It took me up. Yeah, it wasn't, like, the f- the last strange, vaguely sexual thing in the episode, either. I guess my, the thing that really I don't get is I don't understand why the disguises were necessary at all. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Like, when the rangers come in later, spoilers, uh, they don't, like, pretend to be the maids and then hurry out. Yeah. They just hide under the bed before anyone can see them. Yeah. There's no, there's no reason for them to be in disguise at all. Maybe they just like dressing up. You know the dean from Community. Yep. Yeah. They were just looking at any excuse. Any excuse. <laughs> any excuse. We're breaking into a hotel. Oh, maid costume. They just wanted to feel pretty. Yeah, and I get that. Um, so Bulk is searching around for the study notes, uh, and Skull, very committed to character, is frantically dusting, which I think is cute. <laughs> and when. Bulk is like, no, we have to hurry up and find this stuff. He just starts dusting faster. I like the thought that Skull just doesn't ever quite understand <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. Like, Bulk's like, okay, we're going to dress up as maids and break in. And Skull goes, well, we're going to dress up as maids. We're going to be maids. <laughs> we're going to be maids, but let's, if that'll help me get the name on my science test. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they can't find it. Uh, and then they hear that the rangers are coming back into the room. So they hide under the bed yep. in... Uh, the boys' room, because the boys and girls have separate rooms because it's very chaste. It's, isn't it, it's slightly adorable. It is it? slightly adorable. Uh, and this is about the first time I could ever remember something happening that made me think, oh, this is kind of what teenage boys would do. Yeah. Like, is that really what teenage boys Well, I mean, boys yeah, hold on, hold on, because <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like what we actually see is much closer to what teenage boys in homosexual fan fiction <laughs> than what Is teenage what boys would, would ever actually do. Well, look, I I think if you're, like, 14 or 15, and you're, like, okay, having look, a sleepover... Let me break it down. The part where Zach puts on some music and does some dancing, and everyone's like, yeah, that's pretty cool, Zach. Yeah, okay. And jumps on the Wait, bed. What? I need you to stop here. What? <laughs> like, I you know, buy that. You put up to right? music, you do yeah, some silly no, dancing. He put, put on music, yeah. and then the other guys just sat back and watched. That is kind of weird, right? Yeah. And then the part where... But they, they were like, they were like paying him out for it. They go, oh, I can sit down, Zach. You know, that's the, pretty. The part where they start pillow fighting <laughs> yeah. is the part where it crosses over into, oh, okay, right. But, but so, did you not have a pillow fight when you were a teenager? I don't think so. I've had pillow fights. <laughs> did you then make out with the guys afterwards? Is that... No, but look, I'm not saying that, that that's bad, you know? <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's bad. Like, I'm like just saying my it. particular pillow fights didn't end that way, but if, if that's what you want to have a pillow fight, get into it. I never imagined that, like, a boy's... Sleep- okay, first of all, I don't imagine boy sleepovers, <laughs> but I wouldn't imagine that they would involve dancing and pillow fights. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously? Absolutely. Seriously? Seriously, Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like teenager. my sleepovers are more manly than yours. Probably, certainly. Like, I, I, that would not surprise <laughs> me. That's what, what I kind of liked about it too. It's kind of subversive. Like, it wasn't the girls having a pillow fight, it was the dudes. No, because that would be, like, sexy and inappropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Although, speaking of sexy and inappropriate, <laughs> <laughs> the Rangers then decide to go to sleep. Um, and then we get a long, slow padding shot of Jason in his bed. And we get a pretty clear shot of Jason's nips. He's decided to go to bed shirtless. <laughs> yep. And it was unex. Look, I, it, like everybody in the room kind of went, "Oh, like that's." I was not expecting the show to do that. Yeah. And look, uh, he's quite well muscled. I think he might be called out because he's quite pert. Um, <laughs> Jesus. I, I look. I just. If you were a girl 
of the correct age watching that, like right. just like early, 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 early teens, that would be probably inappropriate viewing, don't you think? I mean, it's not like it's not like he's got like his complete bare chest. But it gets, I don't think so because guys walk around without their shirts all the time. I, but like he's in bed, <laughs> so as long as he's reclined, that makes it sexy. Yeah. It's yeah. contextual, I think. You know, I think we need to have a conversation once the show is over <laughs> just about about a lot of things to be perfectly honest i think we just you know i think we need to just discuss some of your assumptions <laughs> look did you not think that was weird though oh i thought it was weird okay. sure i don't think it would cause a young girl to have a sexual awakening which okay. is what i'm suggesting fair enough All i right. didn't think it was weird until you guys reacted and i was like is that is that weird is that i thought it was, I weird, thought it was weird for the show yeah, um, not like we for, for a dude to sleep for, with that for a show on. that is aimed at five. Yeah, months, that's true. You know, that's true. Um, um, I would like to say, in between all this, yeah. we get some shots of Goldar doing some magic with the crystal of nightmares in the one cave in Angel Grove. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Hmm. Whenever anyone does actual magic on this show, yeah, as opposed to like yelling and yeah. electric attacks, yeah. It's it's pretty effective. Distressing. Yeah. 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 And Goldar is he's got a mouth that moves now. Yep. I don't know how new that is, but I certainly don't remember seeing no, it. No, he's it's moved badly for a while. But it's like up and down actual motion. Yeah. Which is kind of you know. Yeah. And there's a he's in that cave and there's some like blue lighting. Yep. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, we did skip over the fact that uh Bulk and Skull hide under the bed when the rings <sighs> come into the room. Yep. And in the bit where um, Zach is jumping it. on the bed. Oh, yep. uh, when we were, again, at Batman Trivia the other night, Michael and I <laughs> saw a Batman fan, uh, like a parody fan film. It, it's 60s Robin with modern Batman. Yep. And it gets to the point where Batman's sort of out of the equation for a bit and Bane grabs, like, 1960s Robin and he's just smacking me in the face over and over and there's <laughs> excessively violent and blood is going everywhere. That's what happens here. That's what happens, but basically... <laughs> Because Zach gets on the bed and starts jumping on it, and Skull's head gets cracked against the floor about ten times. It's horrifically violent. Like, there's no blood, but it's like, that's probably some brain damage going on there. That's not funny. I don't know that you could brain damage Skull any further. <laughs> that's a fair Maybe point. that's why he is the way he is. What, he got jumped on so hard, it retroactively made him... No, <laughs> no, I mean, like, he's, no, I mean, this sort of thing happens to him a lot. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. He hides under a lot of beds. <laughs> um, and and can, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go on. No, I was just going to say that the whole scene, the whole dancing and pillow fighting scene went on for way longer than I felt was necessary. Yeah, the problem is they, there are these scenes that are like, oh, you know, they're normal kids doing, like, kid stuff that would be, you know, like, cool and character developing if I wasn't watching a show about kids who fight a moon witch and giant monsters. <laughs> yeah. Like... I could use a bit more punching. I In about 15 minutes into this episode, I legitimately thought there'd be no morphing in this episode. Yeah, it uh, looked not unlikely. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to say, when the pillow fight happens, yeah. feathers go everywhere. Yeah. They trash that room. I felt bad for the maid. Um, look, Skull does stick his finger under Bog's nose to oh, stop him from sneezing. Yeah, and then... They fall asleep that way? Yep. And it involves, while they're sleeping, Skull's finger just sort of, like, rubbing over the top of Bog's lip. And it, I can't put my finger on exactly what is weird and uncomfortable can't about that. Can't you? Because I'm, I, can, I can tell you exactly what it is, Matt. All right, lay it out for us, Michael. It's the part where his finger is rubbing over Bog's <laughs> lip while they sleep. It's, <laughs> not, it's just the whole part. That's the weird part. <laughs> yeah, it's just uncomfortable. It's just another thing in this episode that is just a little too close to being sexually weird, you know? Huh. Let's find out who wrote this one and uh what they're writing now? Yeah. 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 Oh boy. Alright, so um It's probably American Horror Story. <laughs> <laughs> this was a perfect American horror story. Uh, uh Okay, so they have bad dreams, yeah. is where we got up to. Yeah. Um, and all their bad dreams are clips from previous episodes. Yeah. Amanda, Except... Can you, can you describe them? Because you hadn't seen most of those episodes. Yeah, okay, I, I was taking notes. Oh, just before I do this, I want to note that Trini was wearing a onesie. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Before they were cool. Yeah, so... Okay, just... Yeah. Okay, um... Okay, Billy was dreaming about him and 
Kimberly fighting some sort of monster, and then it, like, shoots out his tongue, its tongue, and, like, grabs him and eats him. Yeah, from memory, is that the episode with the plane, Matt? Maybe. I think where Kimberly had to destroy the frog monster with the... Yeah. Yeah, possibly. You know, when you say a monster that shoots out his tongue and then swallows him, like, watching that clip, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a regular thing. But when you describe it with words, <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, Trini dreamt that the entire team was down. Um, like, it, I think there was, like, some sort of spider web that was, like, spat yeah. on them or something, and they got electrified. That and- would be spider trunk. Yeah. Was yeah. it? I genuinely don't remember that happening at all. But, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Zach dreamt of fighting some dude and, like, losing. Like, yeah, I believe that was the dying. Canasty Knight. <laughs> Canasty Knight, yeah. that's right. Um, let me see. Um, Kimberly dreamt of getting... There was, like, this guy with a big beard. Yes, the beard. samurai fan, man. Yes, yeah. and he sucked her... She was, wasn't in costume, and he somehow accosted her and sucked her into a gourd. Yep. Um, that happened. That did happen. Yep. Uh, Jason... Uh, it was footage from the Green with Evil um, yep. episode where he's in the clouds, the, the moon dungeon. The moon dungeon. Oh, that was right, dungeon. Yes. 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 Is the word I, you're looking for. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that, trying but to okay. avoid, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, and in, yeah. in that scene, it's Goldar holding him by the neck and pushing him up against a wall, just to make yeah. that clear for everyone. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and while they're having these weird dreams, they're making groaning sounds and, like, rustling around in their beds. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty standard bad dream acting. Yeah. But, but again, just given with the context... All of these little bits and pieces in this episode, they all lend each other weird context as well. Yep. You know, it just... Everything's just slightly weird, odd, yeah. I guess. Amanda. I was... Oh, so, no, sorry. Tell us about Bulk and Skull's dream. Okay. I love this so much. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bulk and Skull. Uh, they dreamt that they were... Food themed rangers. <laughs> yeah, food themed. Like I think one of them was pizza. I, and I like. Don't so we'd seen one. their um, superhero alter egos before yes, in an episode. Tuesday. Yeah, but in that they were just pretending to be superheroes to try and garner some attention. Yep. But in this, they get give themselves food themed morphing sequences. Yep. Which I mean, we say morphing sequences. They hold up. I think Bulk holds up a slice of pizza, and yep. Skull holds up a hot dog. Yeah. Yep. And then kind of bad clip art flies out of those. Yeah. And then they're transformed. Yeah. Which, in my mind, if they were dreaming about being superheroes, that's probably what that would be. <laughs> yeah, you see the dreams are really low budget. Yeah. And Skull, to me, he looked like uh, a bad coloured robin. Yep. yep. And Bulk looked like Blue Beetle. Yeah. Yep. See that. That's not fair. That's not an unfair description. Yep. Yep. Um, and then there was a giant robot. Yes, yeah, so they <laughs> summoned they, the Megazord. They fought with it, and I think they destroyed part of the city... It was a confusing time. It was really interesting because they they were inside the, the Megazord and we got to see them in the Megazord control we should, set. We yeah. got to see them in a dodgy knockoff of the Megazord yeah. control set yeah. because we didn't have one of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, basically, they try to pilot the Megazord yeah. but are so bad at it that they destroy it out of control, yeah. destroying buildings, flying around, punching just the air, and then it explodes. Yeah. yeah. And that's their bad dream. Yeah. Like when when I knew the bad dreams were coming, I was thinking, oh, maybe we can get some character development. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> that was my hope, but <laughs> nope. So I was like clinging desperately to like, oh, Trini in Trini's dream, the whole whole team goes down. So that's what she's concerned about. Whereas in Billy's dream, it's just him dying, so he cares about himself more and all that. But no, no. you can't really analyze. No, like they were that. just it's the just... clips that they could find. Yeah. yeah. To be honest. I'm happy to trade any character development stuff for that Balkan Skull weird scene. I want more He's bizarre shit like that. They shared a dream. They were, in, were they in the same dream together? Like yeah, yeah, More or less, yeah. Wow, I think that's... what I liked about that Balkan Skull scene is that it was Balkan Skull comedy that didn't like rely on any of the usual Balkan Skull yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, they didn't get group on their faces. They didn't end up like rolling down a hill or inside a bin. Nope. It was just... I mean, it was still kind of wacky, roll-around comedy. But it, like, stuff but, that I thought was kind of amusing and just more creative yeah. than anything we've seen before. So, yeah. And given that everyone else's dream was, like, recycled nonsense, yeah. we could have easily gotten 
10 minutes of Bok getting pies in his face. Yeah. So we won. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. So, and that's all we can hope for. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then they all have a shared dream. Yeah. Right? Which is Zordon calling them to, to the command center and basically saying, you're all terrible, I'm taking your powers away from you. It's kind of a confronting scene. <laughs> then they wake up. And that's it. They no, longer, they no longer have access to their self-confidence, so they can't use their powers. They all kind of catapult out of bed one by one. Yep. Which was interesting. Yeah. I didn't believe that anyone actually woke up that way until I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I done it before. I don't wake up like that. But when you have really bad dreams. I don't really have bad dreams. Oh, that must be nice for you. I don't have bad dreams. It was just, I don't know, like a restless and then... I, just I have it. that, you know, that, like, thing where your body thinks it's falling. And yeah. You, that yeah. happens to me reasonably frequently. Yeah. But I don't know that I have bad... I have weird dreams more than I have bad dreams. I have both. Like, mm. I once had a dream where Mitt Romney was just hosing himself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he was just that holding that. a hose, and it was just looking in, into it, and it just water was coming out of it. Did I tell you about the dream where um, I had an exam? But during the night, something had eaten my toes. Like, I was Whoa. bleeding. So I crawled to, like, I got dressed and everything. And I crawled down the stairs. And I was crawling down I, the road. Unlike the idea of... that you didn't have your toes and therefore were incapable of walking. Like. <laughs> no, I mean, like, all of them are gone and it's all bloody and it'll oh, hurt okay. to walk. Well, that's fine. And so I'm leaving a trail of blood behind me as I'm crawling to the exam. And I'm on gravel, too, so I'm, well, I'm getting all torn up. But I got to get to the exam. That's messed up. That's messed I, up. That's super telling about your desire to yeah, make like you. Not... You're worried about exams and your toes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and I had the best dream a few days ago. I told you about it. I don't know. Oh, did you? I don't remember, but I'm sure you did. It involves Helen Mirren. Oh, yep, yep. Go on. Let's tell it on the podcast. Come on. But it's kind of long. That's all right. We've always promised that this show would kind of talk about ourselves. Okay. Let's talk about ourselves for a bit. All right. Tell people about this dream. I have to make sure I remember it all. Um, so. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the 66 Batman, the 1960s Batman I mean, I'd wager there's a fair bit of demographic overlap. Yeah. Um, So I had a dream that involved uh, Two-Face and the Penguin. Now, the Penguin was the... What was the name? Burgess Meredith. So Burgess Meredith Penguin from the 60s Batman show, except he was much older. He was in his sort of 60s or 70s. Um, And he lived in his submarine from the 66 Batman movie, but it was docked at a, uh, a marina. Um, and that's where the, the submarine stayed all the time, so it's basically where he lived. And the marina was run by Two-Face, as played by Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> except Tommy Lee Jones is the age that Tommy Lee Jones is now, so he was also reasonably elderly, and he was married... To Helen Mirren, uh, except in the in this dream, he was a pretty even tempered guy. He wasn't as zany as he was in Batman Forever. Um, so, and the Penguin and Two Face were good friends, and they just sort of hung out at this place. And one day, Two Face died peacefully in his sleep. There was no violence in this dream. Wow! So Helen Mirren took over the marina uh, and was doing a really good job of running because she's a very capable woman, but. The Penguin did not like this at all and was very cantankerous and um, was very sexist. It was like, oh, she's a woman. She can't properly run the marina. I'm not going to cooperate. It's going to be a grumpy old man. But because she was such a good, like, so efficient at running the marina and didn't take any of his shit, eventually Helen Mirren Mir- wore um, Bur- Burgess Meredith Penguin down and softened his, his cold heart. They didn't heart. hook up, did they? They did indeed hook up. Uh, more like they fell in love. They fell in love, and they both moved into that submarine together, uh, and they lived happily ever after. So you dreamt a Batman old people soap opera. Yeah, pretty much. It's basically like the sort of film that six-year-old people go and see at the cinema, like the Grand Budapest Hotel, or just like a compelling relationship. I don't think that's the one that you were talking about. Oh, sorry. That other one. Uh, the uh, Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so it's just a... Compelling relationship drama starring old people that also happen to be Two-Face and the Penguin. And so what, are they still doing crime during this? No. 
So they've, they've retired, they just still wear their costumes. Fundamentally, yeah. the only thing about it that is in any way, like, Batman-related co- is that one of the old people in this has half a face. Yeah. <laughs> like, And one of them was the Penguin. Like, he still had his cigars and he still went, rah, rah, rah. Sure, but he's, he's not, like, weird. He's just, a, like, a strange dude. Yeah. And Helen Mirren was just Helen Mirren. She was just Helen Mirren. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm so glad we got that out of the way. Yeah, thanks. Oh, boy, Matt. Uh, feel free to address any emails or complaint to me directly. <laughs> if you've had a weird dream, especially if it was Power Rangers related, yep. we would love to hear about it. Absolutely. Send it through. We'll read it out on the show. Uh, unless you tell us you don't want it read out on the show, in which case we'll just read it amongst ourselves. Okay. Um, okay, so Zordon knows about the Crystal of Nightmares. Yeah. Every time Zordon finds out about something, yep. the Rangers have to, like, the writers have to have it so that it's a thing that Zordon knew existed, but has never mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, I guess so they don't have to explain how he knows what's going on. Yeah, he always says, oh, it's just as I feared. They finally used the Crystal Nightmare. But it does suggest that, like, he really could just warn them about some stuff. Yeah. To me, the subtext here is that he never actually knows. He just likes to pretend he always yeah. knows. Oh, like, the Crystal of Nightmares. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a problem. Yeah, I always knew that was going <laughs> to That's right, okay. yeah. Oh, I saw this coming because I'm very wise. <laughs> um, so he tries to get in touch with the Rangers, who are too scared to talk to him. Yeah. I like how they... Um, sorry, I'm jumping back a little bit. Go for it. But when the boys walk into the girls' room in the morning, Jason just goes, so you had you had the same bad dream? And they're like, yeah. And there's no discussion. Like, there's no... There's like, no clarification. Yeah. Like, I guess you'd assume, like, Kimberly and Trini have already discussed their dream. Yeah. And, like, if they had the same dream, and then Jason comes in and goes, you guys had the same dream. It's and the girls assume- are like, yeah. yeah. And then Jason's like, yeah. Being sexually assaulted by a velociraptor is the worst. It's fair yeah. to assume that Goldar didn't send a separate dream for the boys <laughs> and the girls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just like they they all start off like knowing that everyone else. Yeah, it's just, that's fair. It's just um, weird. So look, basically they just pull through it and just talk to Sword on. Yeah, and sort of like guys, just fucking man up, you know, just deal with it. It's just a dream. <laughs> yeah, just, you know that you have literally had your self confidence taken magically, but yeah, get some self confidence back. The way to deal with that is just you know deal with it. And then, and then he tells them if they smash the crystal, then they'll get their confidence back. Yep. Magically. You know who would have been perfect? Tommy. Yes. Not, still has his self-confidence. Not a Power Ranger. But, but could have gone and taken care, gone of. Taken care of the crystal. Because yeah. he can still do martial arts. Yeah, right? he's still an incredibly talented martial artist. Yeah. And he's still in the school, isn't he? Ostensibly, yes. Yeah. Yes. They just don't talk to him. <laughs> I mean, he's not in the group anymore. He's been pretty firmly he's ostracized. Not in, yeah. Yeah, he's not in the group because he doesn't have powers, even though he's still around and he's still a perfectly good friend. Look, but they don't want him because he can't turn green. Look, the episode Return of an Old Friend is about four episodes away, and I hope that that will shed some light on where exactly he's been. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that he's not there and they just don't talk to him. That's how it's looking. <laughs> my, my dream for that would be that we get a revisionist version of history where we find out that Tommy was just out of frame, <laughs> <laughs> and we see some shots of them, like, talking something through in the class, then we pan back and see you just, like, four desks behind you them. You know what's the better one? Is where they don't pan back. It's just shots of Tommy inserted saying things. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Zach walks up and says, hey, guys, and they have their conversation, and then there's a shot just of Tommy's head on a slightly different background going, <laughs> that sounds great, guys, but I can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, I bet you that's not what happens. No. Okay, so... They go to the cave. Zordon teleports them to the cave. Yeah. Basically to force them to be, uh, like, effective. Yeah. Uh, you know, doesn't quite work, but what are you going to do? Um, I'm sorry, Matt has just broken my computer. Hold on. Don't play with the pen. Okay. Um, so look, Kimberly tries to run away. There are some putties. They try to fight the putties. They can't fight because they've lost all their self confidence. Billy throws a few punches, but but then goes down. But, and everyone else doesn't. They just like, Billy without self confidence yeah. is about as useful as he normally is, <laughs> oh. except for when he's not, because the show is very kind of highs and lows on his mm. fighting ability. Yeah, incredibly inconsistent fighting ability there. 
Um, they, they still all can do martial arts, can't they? The martial arts comes from themselves as opposed to powers. Could they do that before they got the powers? Yes. Yeah. They were like gymnasts and martial artists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just I assume that they no longer have the ability to recognize that strength within themselves. It does seem to be there because they still seem to have the ability to like flip out of danger. Sure, you know. So, yeah. The skills are there, they're just not confident in using them. And basically, Jason runs away. Yeah. Except he just happens to run into the cave uh, where Goldar is and where the Crystal of Nightmares is. Yeah. Goldar once again proves that he is completely useless. The fucking worst. He's unable to kill just a dude who is terrified of him. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, Goldar tries to attack with his sword, Jason ducks out of the way. He tries to attack with his sword again. Jason punches the Crystal of Nightmares. Kicks it, actually. Kicks it. Oh, he kicks it, sorry. It's destroyed. Game over. Yeah. And despite the fact that the last time we saw Jason confronting Goldar without his powers, it was demonstrated that Goldar was a lot stronger than yeah. Jason without his Goldar powers. Goldar was basically playing with him, waiting to kill him. Yeah. Goldar still runs away at this point. Yep, yeah. instantly. In, like, straight away, he's like, oh, guess, guess I'm done. Uh, and runs away. Yep. And so then the Power Rangers, they, you know, they yeah. beat the putties. We they, get close-ups of each of their faces looking inspirational while yeah. um, Jordan says, oh, now you've got your powers yeah, this back. This is weird because it's like he's saying it telepathically yeah. rather than saying it with the, communicators. with the communicators, which is not something I think we've ever seen him do before. No. In fact, they usually can't contact the order if the communicators Yeah, that's down. true. So, so, who knows? Eh. Who Maybe knows? Maybe he was just broadcasting from the communicator. That's possible. He just felt, really felt the need to give that speech. Yeah. Oh, and we get a reprise of the Fantastic Song Fight. Yep, we're going to hear that a lot. Which features the lyrics fight. I love that fight song. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they beat up the putties. And then Billy's martial arts, uh, Billy's are back again, so yep. I guess he's a good fighter this episode. Yep, only when necessary. Yeah. Goldar and Scorpina teleport down. After they defeat the putties, yeah. yeah. So uh, after running away, Goldar comes back when there's more power in Yeah, well, no, but he comes back with backup. Yeah, with Scorpina. I'm not fighting these guys on my own, but I'll bring he, my girlfriend. He comes back with the capable one of yeah. the two of them. Uh, and we get what I'm pretty sure is a reused fight. Yeah, I'm I think pretty so. sure it's from, like, Green with Evil or one of those. Yeah, yeah so they summon the Megazord. They have a fight with Scorpina. Yeah. Need and to make some bro. And yep. Gola, um, And it's pretty stock standard. And just when they're about to win, they both run away. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the end of that stuff. Yeah. So, back at school. No, no, not back at school yet. Back in the oh, motel. Sorry. Oh, God, yeah, <laughs> I didn't... I forgot this. <laughs> the actual maid comes in and starts vacuuming. She's very dismayed, as she should be. It's a terrible mess, apparently. Yeah, it's dismayed. Yeah. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, because the parents have trashed the motel like rock stars. So she's vacuuming around and bumps into Bulk and Skull, who have fallen asleep on the floor, uh, and screams, as you would if you found someone in maid drag hiding under hiding the bed. Under a bed. Like, she doesn't know, maybe they're serial killers trying to kill those kids. I think or... that's the reasonable expectation in that situation. Yeah, I would just assume that they were, like, two lovers who had gone, like, had some sort of thing Willow gone origin. awry. I mean, either way, it's certainly, like, shocking. Yeah. Unexpected. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, after she screams, Bulk screams at about the same pitch. Yep. Realising that they're late for the exam, and they both run off. And then it cuts to the school, and I was terrified that they would show up at the school in those outfits. <laughs> I wish that happened. But no. Yeah, no, that would have been... I was, like, 90% sure that's where this was going. No, luckily, we've skipped forward some amount of time. Uh, to them getting the results back from the test. Yep. Everyone got A's, which kind of devalues the purpose of grading if everybody achieves an A. Well, the Power Rangers got A's. Presumably everyone else didn't do as well as them. That's certainly possible. Because they're the Kim golden children. Yeah. And then Kimberly says practically to the camera something like, oh, I'm so glad we decided to devote our time to our studies. Yeah, I think I it was something about, oh, yeah, focusing on studies really pays off. The show's gotten a lot preachier since it came back after the kind of semi-season yeah. finale. Yes. Um, Which, again, I think is uh, a reaction to criticisms that's too violent. Yes. It's like, no, we're not violent, we're really good for kids. Yeah. I was just recently reading there was some sort of movement in American television where all the kids' programs had to be kind of um, educational, that then 
Captain Planet came out of that. Those bits at the end of Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon says, came out of that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the kind of, especially the backlash against violent TV shows, is Power Rangers' fault. Yeah. Like, it happened and kids punched their grandmas. I think it was... Shut up. <laughs> it was... And it was my great-grandmother, I'll have you know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it was Power Rangers... That great if you punched her. Ninja Turtles, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So, there was... You know, there's a lot of things, especially in kind of this first season... Yeah. ...that are more violent than you'd expect from kids' TV. Yeah. Because it was the first time that they'd done that. Yeah. And then after they did that, someone was like, Whoa, no, no. You thought you could get away with that? Nope. Yeah. yeah. Which um, is depressing, because especially compared to that Xyra Ranger, it's not that intense. No, it's not at all. It's uh, it's it's occasionally violent, but it's never, like, scary or threatening, except for when Rita does actual magic with a skull. Yeah. Were you ever scared by Power Rangers when you no. were a kid? No. Um, oh. I have this vague memory that maybe I was scared by Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. I've never actually seen Turbo. Oh, really? Well, I won't tell you what the part is. Okay. But there's a part that is, like, out of place spooky. Yeah. It's like a section from a weird horror movie in the middle of Turbo Power Rangers movie. (laughs) And I I don't think I was ever, like, nightmare scared of it. Mm. I think it was just, like, unexpectedly freaky. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't don't think it ever scared me. Hmm. Do you, speaking of the educational bits, do you guys remember the CGI animated Action Man show that had the live action Action Man bits at the end where he'd... Is that the show where he had, like, a super ability where he could, like, MacGyver stuff? Yeah, he could, like, slow down time. Yeah. 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 And he did, like, extreme sports. That's a catchphrase that I don't remember. I do absolutely remember that show, yes. That's all I had to say about it. Didn't he have a real name that was, like, he was, like, Alex Mann? Yeah, something something like that. Double N on the man. Yeah. (sighs) I do not remember this show. This was, I want to say, early 2000s. That sounds about right. Maybe even slightly earlier than that. Yeah. yeah. It, you didn't miss much. <laughs> it was slightly better than reboot-style animation. Uh, Matt, reboot was the fucking greatest. And if you say anything bad about reboot, you are never doing this podcast ever again. Well, all right. That reboot, jumped up at us. Reboot was the best television show of the 1990s. Was it? Was it really? I will stand by that. Whoa! Batman animated series. Yeah, no, I will stand by reboot being better. Fuck off. No, I will. Ah, uh, season season three of reboot is amazing. It, better than Batman animated yeah. series. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just want is just want to clarify: is reboot the one where they're where... inside a computer? Yeah. The... Yeah. Yes, that's a re- correct reaction to that. No, reboot is great. Do you <laughs> want? Well, I've got all of reboot sitting on my shelf. Do you want to sit and watch reboot? We will do the reboot cast. Are you serious? You don't really, do you? Yeah. Look, it's reboot, behind a thing. Reboot was perfectly good, but Batman the Animated Series was iconic. And in- I don't have an emotional attachment to Batman the Animated Series like you do, yeah. because I did not watch it as a child. But a lot of those episodes, if you go back and watch them, hold up. Eh. No, I, I think... But have you gone back and watched some of the... Yeah, Batman a lot of the animation is painful to watch. The, the animation in the first it, few it, seasons is not good. It, it's choppy, but... Some of the scripts of that, it's like good television, not good sure, children television. Sure, but I would hold reboot. I would hold episodes of reboot against episodes of Batman. You cray cray. No, oh, you cray cray, Michael. I'm not cray cray. Cray cray. I'm going to have to do a whole thing in the show notes now about what is reboot. You're going to write a whole manifesto. I, I will probably just link to the Wikipedia page, knowing how I've approached show notes in the past. <laughs> uh, I would like some guests to weigh in on this: Batman the Animated Series versus reboot. Let us know which side you're on. I'm not saying Batman the Animated Series isn't great. Yeah. I'm just saying Reboot is equally great. No, you were saying better. I would say that there are episodes that are better. Okay. Well, once again... I have strong feelings about Reboot. Choose a side in the Great Ranger Danger Civil War. Uh, uh, yeah, let's know whose team you're on. Uh, so back to Power Rangers. And when you're on mine, explain to Matt why he's wrong. Anyway, uh, yeah, oh God, do we have to go back to Power Rangers? Unfortunately. There's some dumb stuff. Yeah. I feel uh, like no one's going to be on your side. Well, I mean, sure, but other people are going to be wrong. They're just going to have to accept that. No. Uh, so, Bulk and Skull got Fs. Yeah. Okay? Um, and Skull is happy because he's like, it's not a D. And we were told if we were Ds, we'd get, like, detention. Which, technically, is a loophole that may work. Except for the part where that's not how it works at all. No. Uh, so, the principal tells them, do you know what F stands for? 
forever. Because <laughs> that's how long you got detention for. Which is super mean to start off with. Then he writes forever on the board. No, Matt, he writes forever. Okay, he fucks up it's his R. definitely an X at the end. Uh, <laughs> which, I, again, I feel like he's a bad educator. The like, worst part for me is that he doesn't, like, give them back and say, see me after class. Yeah. yeah. He calls them up to the front of the class, yeah. says, you two got Fs and you got detention forever. He actually says, read them and weep, like a poker... Yeah. yeah. It's like, the, the intention of teaching kids is not to take the kids who are less intelligent and go, humiliate them. you're dumb. Yeah. Right? The point is to make them not dumb. Yeah. And I don't think... I mean, to be fair... Balkan Skull have shown no signs of caring about their grades in any way. Well, yeah. they did here. Yeah. I mean, they were trying to cheat so they wouldn't... Yeah, they, they weren't looking to that's be educated. Because though. there was a punishment. Oh, that, like, yeah, that's true. It wasn't like, hey, it's a test, let's study. It's, hey, it's a test that we cannot fail, let's study. Yeah. Uh, and then, for some reason, the paper that Mr. Kaplan is waving around has a lot of dust on it. Bulk sneezes. Bulk sneezes, and... The power of he sees blows off Mr. Kaplan's toupee because that's their old fallback joke, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then end of episode. It ends on just a shot of bulk, like... Sheepish. He's not like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened, or haha, that's so funny it happened. It's just like, oh, that's a thing that happened. <laughs> yep. And that's, that's the end. And that's it. I mean, look, it was certainly different. I'll give it that. Yeah, I would much rather that than a boring episode anyway. But at the same time, I feel like if we were to watch three of those in a row, we'd yeah. go insane. Yeah. I feel like, as opposed to the monster, I'm going to remember this episode by the pillow fight. The Fair Balkan enough. Skull and the pillow fight. Because there's a lot of Balkan Skull in there. There is, yeah. And the pillow fight just went on forever. I mean, I think that's unfair. It was probably only like a minute. But in a twenty. No, the dancing show. went for like a minute, and then there was the pillow fight, which also went for like a minute. <laughs> yeah, they got to fill that time. Okay. Um, before we go, uh, the monster arranger. Yes. Or, what were we going to call it? I wrote it down, and then I lost it. Uh, monster manifest. The monster the manifest. We kind of leaning towards maybe. Yep. Or the minion manifest. Or so. Anyway, yeah. there but, was no new monster this week. But we did get Goldar back again. I'm kind of feeling like we should drop him some. What do you reckon? Really? Yeah. I mean, this was like a solid evil plan that he affected almost scarily. It's just that then he disappeared twice. And twice. And that's why he's so low on the list. I feel like every time he does it, we should bump him down some. Well, he values his survival because he, he knows he can come back to fight another day. He knows that he's in the Japanese footage of the rest of the episodes. <laughs> um, I feel like this doesn't change my opinion. Like, it does. I don't think Goldar is worse out of this episode, but he doesn't come across as better. I think he breaks even. All right. Um, and Scorpino, would you say the same? Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, she just goes down because she's in that footage. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll keep the list as is. No this adjustment week. this week. No adjustment. So we'll be back next week with an episode called "To Flee or Not to Flee," <laughs> and the first flea is F L E A, like the jumping insect, and oh, the boy. second flea is like run away. So, I mean, I assume it's a flea monster, possibly one that induces fear. You, you get turned into a flea if you want run away, and if you, you don't flee, then you have to fight them. I mean, I guess. I'm, well, just, I'm just trying to figure out what the plot could be from, from that title. From well, uh, we'll find out next week. Amanda, will you be back? Yes, I will. All right. Excellent. Uh, our website is www.rangerdangerpodcast.com, where we have show notes and just a generally nice design, I think. <laughs> You can also find the, the monster list, the monster manifest. Yes. Uh, RangerDangerPodcast.com slash monster. That's right. Or possibly slash monsters. Try them both. One won't work. <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> uh, you can send us at interweb mail directly to our interweb mailbox at RangerDangerPodcast at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, we're not sold completely on monster manifest, I don't think. Yeah, so I mean, look, we're, a, we're a different option. Or we're it's, still it's not locked in yet, basically. Yeah. If you've got, if you had a weird Power Rangers dream, please let us know. Remember um, to send in your votes um, for either Batman the Main Series or reboot. Yep. Uh, you can also let us know that on Twitter. We're at Ranger Decast on the Twitters. Yep. You can find the show on iTunes and Stitcher. And we're also on YouTube. And Facebook. Did you say Facebook? And Facebook. Oh, that reminds me. I'd also like to apologise because we are indeed on Google Plus by accident. 
Oh, because we got a YouTube. Because we have a YouTube account, it automatically created the Google Plus account. Yep. Please don't think less of us. That wasn't our intention. Yeah. Uh, one of you did add us to your circles. Oh. We don't understand what that means. <laughs> and uh, have very little intention of finding out what that means. Uh, so don't contact us on Google+. Plus. Yeah, basically. no, I, I wouldn't use that as your first point of call. There are six uh, other but, ways to do it. But thank you, whoever did that. It yeah, I look, look, I appreciate it. Sure, why not? Um, okay, to flee or not to flee is next. It is indeed next. I want to pad this out for another seven seconds. So that we hit an hour. An hour. That's a solid... This is our longest podcast of all time because we is got it? to do an argument about Reboot and Batman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I told them about my Helen Mirren dream. I mean, look. That's quality. You can't get that anywhere else. Uh, and on that note, yes. we will see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.